Hello everyone, welcome to your 35th C++ Cube game tutorial. So let's just go ahead and pick right off where we left off in the previous tutorial. We're just about to declare and define this display game over window uh, member function. So let's just uh, remind ourselves what this does. We'll go over to our plan sheet and basically this member function is going to first of all disable everything in the scene so we can't interact with anything except this window. And then it's going to darken it and then it's going to show a quit button and a play button. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and start implementing that. We'll go inside the game class and we'll make it a public method. Display game over window and it takes a queue string and then text to display. Okay. Let's go ahead and define it. Inventation problems, just take care of that. All right, um, so let's go ahead and disable, first of all, all scene items. We're going to traverse through it and basically disable them. So let's do a basic for loop. We're going to get all the items. All right. And for each So we're going to traverse to all of the items and we're going to call their set enabled member function and pass in false. This will disable them. All right. Um, the next thing that we want to do is pop up the so pop up semi transparent. Yeah. Okay. Pop up semi transparent panel. We're going to use a member function that we made previously to do this. Remember our draw panel member function. Um, so the way do we want to place this? We want to place it zero zero top left corner. We want to make it as big as our whole window, so 1024 by 768. And uh, uh, one note about these hard-coded numbers that um, basically I've been using these hard-coded numbers, but I, I thought I'd been telling you guys uh, that I only do this because, you know, I just don't want to spend too much time. But you usually want to just uh, use like a screen width or screen height. Use constants or variables because that makes your program uh, more extensible. But I just do these to save time. So anyways, we're going to draw panel uh, 768. And what color do we want it? Well, we're going to just make it black because we want to darken the background. But we don't want it to be uh, solid. We want it to be a little transparent. So we're going to make the opacity 0 0.65, roughly. And uh, that should be it. OK. So that's our uh, transparent panel. So now we're going to draw the actual panel because we want the game over window to have a little window of its own. So we're going to draw another panel on top of that. Let's call it draw a panel. Uh -oh. We're going to draw a panel. Uh, this one we're going to put somewhere in the middle, so uh, about 312 on the X and then like 184 um, on the Y and then we're going to put it uh, and we're going to make it 400 by 400. What color? We're going to make this light gray. And we're going to also make this a little transparent, but not too much. Okay, so first of all, we darken the background. Then we pop up a little gray panel. And in this gray panel, we're going to put two buttons. So first of all, we're going to create a um, play again button. So let's go ahead and create a button. We're going to call it play again. play again and that's what it should say okay and let's set the position of this button play again set uh, set position what do you want to set it to um, you're gonna have to uh, play with these numbers or you're gonna have to use some 
maybe algebra if you want to scale it to find out where you want to position them. But I, I already did this work, so I, I can I kind of just eyeball it wherever it looks good. So we're gonna place it at 410 and uh, um, let's see in 300. Okay, so we, we've created that button and then we want to always add items to the scene. So let's go ahead and add it. And uh, let's connect it because remember, we got to connect it to something. So we want to connect play again, signal. We want to connect its click signal to the game's slot. And we're going to make a slot called restart. Restart game. We have not made that yet, but we're going to make that. That's the next thing that we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and do that. Perfect. And now that we have the play again button, let's go ahead and create the quit button. So button quit. Not two U's, that's just one U. And okay, let's set its position to roughly 410, 375. And again, you just kind of play around with these numbers to find out where uh, the placement looks good. So let's add it. Uh, and let's connect it. So we want to connect this quit buttons, which signal? It's a uh, clicked signal to the game's slot. Which slot? Uh, close, because we wanted to close the whole application. And that's it. This is all for the display game over member function. And now the last thing left to do is make this restart game slot. That's a very easy one. So we'll go ahead and go inside the game class and we're going to give it a slot. So in addition to the start slot, we're going to call it restart game. Okay, and we'll go ahead and add definition. And let's remind ourselves what this is supposed to do. So we'll look inside our plan sheet. All it does is clear the cards, both the player one deck, the player two deck, and then it clears the hexes, and then it clears the whole scene, and then it simply cards start. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do that. So um, say clear some stuff, then call start. Okay, that's what it's going to do. So player one cards, this keeps track of all of the cards that belong to player one. We're going to clear that. So we're going to remove them all. Um, and basically this clear member function of the queue list, remember that the player one cards is a queue list. This will basically delete everything. So it's called clear. Player two cards dot clear. Okay. And then hex board, we're going to get, uh, we're going to call the clear. Um, we're going to get hex board clear. Let me see. Yeah, so let's see, hex board, we're going to get the hexes, and then we're going to call clear on that. And uh, when we have that, let's go ahead and clear the scene. This will remove all the items from the scene. And then we're simply going to call start. And that's it. So let's go ahead and do build, clean all, build, run QMake. And let's go ahead and run this. And hopefully it'll work. I'm sure we're going to get some bugs in the beginning. So no variable unsigned int. Oh, so this is a silly bug. I just forgot an I there. OK, there we go. Let's see if it works. Play. And then let's go ahead and place, uh, I don't know, like this one here. And let's see if we place a stronger one here. Should conquer it. Good. And then let's put a 6 here. And then a six here, and then let's put a five here. Okay, conquered that one because six is greater than four. And basically, yeah, so you take turns placing these cards, and then uh, let's see what happens when the game is over. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to pause, fill up this, and then show you guys. Okay, so it's almost filled. Let's go ahead and put the last few in here. And it looks like red is winning, but we'll find out at the very end who's winning. I've just been placing them randomly, but obviously you want to use a strategy 
you want to play stronger cards on the weaker sides of the enemy so you can conquer them, but I'm just testing this out, so it doesn't really matter. It looks like red has more, but we'll find out. Okay, there we go, and uh, uh, so we have a uh, we have a little bug it seems like. So we have this play again and the quit button, but there's no text. That's a little uh, strange. Let's go ahead and see if the play again button works. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, so let's see why that text didn't come. I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. Um, so let's see if we created that text. So we're gonna go into the games. Uh, display game over window let's see we create all the stuff and the play button and the quit button and we forgot the text so that's why it didn't show up so we're just gonna create text announcing winner we're gonna queue graphics text item we're gonna call this text um, winner or over text whatever so that's what we'll call it queue graphics text item and uh, we're going to pass in text to display. Okay, so whoever won, we passed in that message. And let's see, now we're going to go ahead and set the position. Uh, set position for the text item to 460 to 25. It should be about above the buttons. And then we're going to add it. And now it should show up. Sorry about that strange little bug, but this is part of testing. So we have text item undeclared. Oh, called it not text item, over text. I got confused. Okay, that's a silly bug. All right. So we have this open, and let's run it again. It should work. Okay, so this time it should work. Um, I'll go ahead and populate this board again uh, you guys may want to make a smaller hex board that's very easy to do you just change a number but I'll go ahead and populate this and then I'll show you guys so we'll pause this and I'll see you guys in a little okay so I've populated this entire thing it's player one's turn and there's one more hex left to populate at the right over here so let's go ahead and put and see who won there we go. Oh, wow. That's odd. So it was a tie game. Apparently, they both have the same exact amount. So as you can see, our game over uh, works fine. Uh, notice how the background darkened up a little bit, and then we popped up this little semi-transparent gray thing. And then we have these two buttons, a quit button that quits. And this, is, this works. All it does is call the graphic fuse quit method. Oh, and one more thing uh, is basically we have to move these initialization when we initialize the card to place pointer to null and the number of cards placed to zero let's just go ahead and move that in the start member function so that it happens again um, when we start when we restart the game and there we go okay so we've we're completely done with this uh, uh, game so it, it's a pretty fairly complete game it was a decently complex game and basically by far the most uh, suggested game for the next tutorial series is a top-down role-playing game. So basically we're going to probably learn quite a lot going through that tutorial because it's going to be the, uh, by far the most complex game that we've created. It's going to include an inventory system, uh, a system for a quest system, an item system, a crafting system, combat system, etc. So it, we're going to basically cover quite a lot and we're going to learn a lot in the process. And it should be very, very fun. So the reason why I'm doing that is because it is by far the most suggested game. Uh, if you guys have any other more, any other suggestions or if you want to help uh, plan out or, or say what features you want in the game, uh, please just comment and I, I'd like to try to implement as much as I can in that game and try to make that game by far the most complex and the best that we've made. Because uh, basically, I think now that we've made three games, we're advanced enough to make one really, really good one. And that one is going to be a top-down role-playing game. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.